Hi, my name is Azioni Blue, and I'm going to explain you the rules of Dead of Winter as fast as possible. Dead of Winter is a very complex game with many rules and even more little things that you have to pay attention. The game is set in an apocalypse scenario where you and your friends are trying to survive the harsh obstacles that you will encounter during the game. So zombies is a thing and they are trying to eat you alive. Kill them or run away before it's too late. Don't forget, food and weapons are very important. Scout the area, search around and hope to find something useful. Who is going to help and who is going to be the traitor that his secret mission is to kill everyone? Let's find out in a game called Dead Winter. If this is the first time that you see Dead of Winter, don't worry, I will try to explain you as much as possible in the shorter time as possible. The knife represents the first person that goes uh, and begins the round. The tokens over here representing your characters from this deck over here, which everyone is gonna draw four cards and choose two of them. Let's begin with that. Let's say you got two, you got two. Uh, and I get two as well. That's one, that's two, that's three, four. Everyone gets four. They choose which one they want. Every character has obviously their special powers. For example, Alexis over here, when she goes to the library once per round, when performing a search in a library, you may keep another one additional card, which is good. Library is up here and you have certain places that you can visit and search for items over here the police station grocery school library hospital and gas station so for alexis uh, having the um, the special power of searching two times when she goes over there to the library and she spend her die to search she's, she's gonna draw two cards we're gonna get into that in a little bit so after everyone chose their cards everything goes back and the deck stays over there, shuffled, whoops, I did a mistake, stays over there, shuffled, and we're going to be using it later on. Then the next step is to get our traitor cards and our normal cards, that's how we play the game. You give them a good shuffle together, and everyone picks a secret objective. That's what you're trying to accomplish as a player, you're trying to do your secret mission. My secret mission right now is the main objective to be finished, which is these ones over here. This is the colony uh, objectives. One side, uh, it's the normal difficulty, and the other one is the hardcore difficulty. 
for our purpose, you, uh, we're going to just choose a normal difficulty and read what it says. It says you put your morale into 6. So we come over here and we put our morale into 6. Next step, round track starts at 6. So the round start at 6. There we go. And then add one zombie to all non-colony locations. This is the colony. This middle deck over here, this is the colony, this is the non-colony. So our objective starts a little bit rough. You get these zombie tokens and you add one uh, to every location. Depends what is the uh, colony telling you to do. And everyone just picks their characters and they place them over here. Uh, to the colony so the game can begin. Let's say I put this four. Uh, does it say anything else in this case? Every time a zombie is killed, roll a die. That's how you win. Uh, if the die results in a four or higher, add a zombie token to the objective. Accumulate three zombies on this main objective for each player that started the, the game. So, in order to actually win the game, everyone is going to be working together to get these um, uh, zombie tokens or the zombie samples, I would say. And we're going to be adding them into the colony. And that's how we the game is going to finish. But there is multiple ways for the game to finish. If the morale drops down to zero, or if the rounds drops down to zero, that also finish the game. We are trying to do this objective over here before the rounds or the morale goes down. That's how we're going to win the game. Uh, the next step is to draw a crisis on every beginning of the round. We're going to be revealing a crisis that is going to be happening that we're going to be trying to solve. If we don't solve it, bad things are going to be happening. So the crisis over here says um, that we need fuel uh, equal to the number of non-players we have. So let's say we are four players, so we need four fuel. Uh, if we fail, we're going to lose two morale. We don't want that to happen. So everyone together, we need to gather four fuels so we don't lose two morales. That's going to be bad for us and we're going to lose the game and we don't want that to do. If someone is a traitor and is, and is trying to sabotage uh, the crisis, uh, by the way, the crisis, let me let me do this. Um, at the beginning of the round, depends on how many players you are, uh, you draw an X amount of starting cards, which in this case, uh, let's say it's four. I do have a fuel in my heart, in, in my hand. Uh, let's say I am, what? I am the first player that starts the game. I get the knife. Uh, so what you do, you flip this and you always put it upside down uh, without anyone knowing what is your card. Remember, we need four fuel. I put one and I say, hey guys, I put one. But someone that is a traitor can choose, which is not smart, because even the traitor has their own objective that they want to accomplish and they don't want the morale of the game to finish before they accomplish their secret mission. Uh, remember, mine was uh, finish the main objective and if there is a betrayer, they have been exiled. So I'm looking for someone to be the traitor. I cannot win the game if, if the game finishes and someone is the traitor. I need to actually try to find who is the traitor somehow and, and exile them in order for me to win the game, my secret mission. So let's say I do want to sabotage, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw one medicine over there even though it's not a fuel right at the end we are gonna give it a good shuffle whoops let's put them together you're gonna give it a good good shuffle so no one knows what it is and you're gonna reveal them up oh, there is uh, one fuel and one medicine so who put the medicine over there medicine at that time counts as one less so let's say if all of us put four cards in total and three of them is fuel and the other one is just a random card um, that is going to count as two fuel. One random card takes another card and takes it away. So now you have two cards, which is really bad. Uh, if that happens, again, the morale goes down by two. You don't want that to do to happen. Uh, your players can also die. Uh, you don't you don't lose the game, but the morale goes one again. 
if you are starving, if you haven't fed your colony, the morale goes down, and so on and so on. There is many ways to lose the game, and there is many things that you need to pay attention. But the most important is the colony. That's how uh, we finish the game and, and accomplish uh, that objective. Uh, the crisis that is going to be drawn every round that we need to solve, otherwise it's going to finish the game before anything else. And obviously our secret objective. Um, let's say the game begins, I am the first, I, I get my die, you always, all of us roll it at the same time, I have a 6, 4 and 4, you put it in the unused pile. If you get confused and you don't know what the hell is going on, don't worry, there is a colony phase card that explains you the things that you can do, and there is also the player turns actions, which it tells you what you can do with a die or without the die. Attack a zombie, search, barricade, clean the waste and attract zombies. Um, that is with action die. Uh, sorry, with action die, yeah. It doesn't require to play a card, uh, add a card to the crisis, where is this one over here, add in a card over there, we explain. Uh, Spread food token, request cards and so on, doesn't require any dice. Um, why dice are important, you reveal the cards, uh, the player cards to everyone so they know your special power. And uh, let's say Mr. Alexis, Miss Alexis over here, is uh, able to search, if you see the icon over there, it says search with a die of 4 or above, or attack with a 5 or above. So she's not really good killer because the chances of you getting a 5 or a 6 to kill a zombie is not very good, and also her searching is pretty high, but she has the ability of drawing two cards when she goes to the library. Um, the crisis says we need fuel, so obviously I'm going to get Alexis and try to find a place that has the most fuel over here in the gas station. You see the icon, it goes in order. You're going to find more uh, fuel, and then guns, and then food, medicine, and then people. So she goes over, over there, she always needs to roll an exposure die, and there is three bad things that can happen over there. If we zoom in, uh, nothing happened to me, uh, but you can get uh, bitten and your character dies, and the disease, let's say, spreads around to the people that they are in the area. If there is no players, nothing happened. You can get wounded, three wounds, you dead, good night. Or you get a frostbite, which... Uh, Obviously, three of those you die, but the difference between these two is on the frostbite, on every beginning of the round, you add a wound into the, into your player. So frostbite is, is a slow death, while uh, the wound, three of them you die, and the, and the bite, you are insta-dead, and it can spread around, and bad things are going to be happening. So she went over there, she rolled the die, nothing happened to her. She has the ability of searching two cards at the same time, spending a die. A die of five, no, four or above. So thankfully, I had the die to search, literally, that's one die for two. One search for two cards, another for two cards, and another for two cards. So in this case, I got very lucky. So I can draw another two, and then another two. And I grab all of these, actually. Yep. Let's put them in my hand. And see what we have. So we have two helpless survivors. Helpless survivors, you, you can play the, the card at any time that you want. And it says... Uh, to the top of, of the card deck of the following, place their matching uh, st uh, standy at the colony and add one helpless survivor to the token of the colony. So you need to get one helpless, put him over here, and then grab one of these uh, survivor cards. It goes into your hand, you check it, you see it, and then you place it down. Now you have, you have three survivors. The number of dice, they increase for... For every survivor that you have, plus one die. So let's say I have three, I'm going to be using four dices. Uh, but you don't get the die until the end of the round. That's where you add or remove. But you need to actually fit the character. 
So he goes to the colony and you can actually need to feed them. With that, I will give you an example. I have food. Uh, the food, you place it uh, the, in a way that everyone sees. That's one food goes in there. Um, we have another food. Another food, guys, goes in there. So I can feed one, two. I can feed this four, but I cannot feed that one. I'm going to need help from the other survivors. And don't forget about this one, right? We are trying to add cards. Oh, you shouldn't. Oh. You shouldn't be able to see that one, my bad. You flip it and you put it. I put three gasolines, guys. Guys, we need just one uh, to actually um, prevent the crisis from uh, uh, making us lose the morale. And that's pretty much the short of it. Uh, you can add barricades with any type of uh, die that you have. That's the wounds and the bites that goes into your characters. Remember those. That's the food that you're going to be contributing to the survivors over here. And this is the die that you're going to be rolling for exposure or attacking. Um, remember, there is plenty of things to do. On the player's round, uh, you can do these things over here. When everyone plays, uh, you have this card to go through the colony phase to pay the food, check the waste, at the zombies, and so on and so on. So hopefully... Uh, that was uh, a rough explanation and a fast explanation that will explain you and introduce you into the game so we don't have to do it every week. One very last important thing is every beginning of the round, the person on your right draws uh, a crossroad. A crossroads uh, have a secret objective over there. In this case, it says, if a non-exile survive survivor the player controls perform a search at the library which i did so you have this player over here keeping an eye on the card and when this trigger says up oh, crossroad and then it's some of them are optional so i choose w which one of the two options i'm gonna go with or it's a group vote which uh, can be yeah thumbs up or thumbs down that's the two times that we see over here. So this is a group. Everyone votes. This is uh, optional for me, one or two. And that's pretty much uh, the basics uh, of the game. That's the exile cards that we haven't touched at all. But, you know, when we get into the exile cards, that's when uh, things go in a different way. But uh, we're going to get more in-depth and uh, as we play, you will understand even more. That's pretty much uh, with the Dead of Winter introduction. And let's jump into the game and have a good time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully I tried to explain as much as possible. So I'm going to see you over there.